I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while the last us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today on the show, we will be tasting some spooky named wines in honor of Halloween. My special guest is my good friend, Andrew Scully. Currently, you can see Andrew on The Masked Singer, and upcoming, you'll be able to see him in the TV show, Caretaker. So without any further ado, let's get started. This is Andrew. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. How do we know each other? We know each other from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We stood in together. We did. So we didn't get to dress up in costumes a lot, so this no. is sort of fun for us, we didn't, yeah. the in front of the camera part. But we do both act as well. Yes, we and do. And currently, you can be seen on The Masked Singer. The Masked Singer. And then yes. you're going to be starring in Caretakers as Todd. You are too. With two Ds. Todd with two Ds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, and I am Davey with a Y. Uh -huh. We don't have the when yet, because that one's in post. Announcements will be made. Anything else you're working on or coming This up, right or? now. Oh, I know. How exciting. <laughs> Call me a cab. Yeah. It's all the rage. Well, I'm going to ask you a few questions before we get started. Okay. And I know a little bit because we've hung out. You're not really a big wine drinker, are you? I'm not a huge wine drinker. Why don't you drink wine? I've tried them and I do like them. Okay. I mostly like reds. I do like the Sauvignon Blancs mm. every now and then. But honestly, wine is so acidic mm. and I have acid reflux that whenever I drink it, it's just not sitting well. Some wines, I think, are more acidic than others, and I don't know how to tell which are which. Or it could also be wines that are more cheaply made, have a lot of mm. influence on them that mechanically. Could be and it. Yeah. yeah, and I have a feeling it's like <laughs> organic foods. Like when you wind up drinking better <laughs> wines, you may not run into the same problems. Yeah. Now I don't know, so I'll look it up I and I'll see, see what that, I can though. find out. Definitely. But yeah, that's yeah. that would be like my guess. I can't tell you how acidic everything we're gonna have today okay. is, so best of luck to you, and uh, <laughs> we'll get you some tums at the end. Ooh. So what we're doing today, because it's gonna be Halloween soon. Mm -hmm. We're going to taste all wines that have some kind of spooky theme. Yes. This one is Ooh. the Chronic Cellars Spritz and Giggles Cuvée. I love the logo. The creators of Chronic Cellars, Josh and Jake Beckett, who are brothers, one of them's a wine grower, one of them's a wine maker. Okay. I always thought, Wine's in a winery. They grow the grapes, they pick the wine. I was just gonna ask yeah. you, how is this actually made? They use grapes from different areas. One of the brothers is a grower and supplies mm. some of the grapes, but they get the grapes from around. Okay. They grew up in Paso Robles. Well, that's where they are now. Okay, so but like wine the Napa country. Area. Yeah, well, in that whole stretch of mm. the West Coast is basically wine country. And then they went away to school and basically came back and went like, mm. let's get in the family business. And there's yeah. a Dawn Beckett as well. I don't know if she's a sister or a wife or whatever, oh, but she's. I thought it was like a mob boss. She's the Dawn, yeah. <laughs> and she's the one that's in charge of this part. Taste it, pour it, uh -huh. you know, generally mm -hmm. managing the cool, fun stuff that we all get to experience. So, bubbly uh -huh. is not always champagne. So this is a cuvee, which is a sparkling white. So no way. Wave. Wait a second, what? I know, mind blown. While I'm opening this, I'm gonna ask okay. you a question. Sure. Do you remember the first time you had wine? <sighs> yeah, See? it was at Thanksgiving and I was probably around 10 or 12 Isn't and it was a sip. It wasn't right, like, right. hey, here's a glass of wine. It was like, okay, take a sip and I was like, Mm. And did you, were you nope. excited to take the sip? Like, oh, oh my God, I'm getting totally. alcohol. Yeah, I felt like a badass, but it it's tasted so terrible. I, I think some parents do that on purpose because it's a grown up flavor. Yeah. What about other alcohol? What did you start? I don't want to say, what did you start drinking? <laughs> I think my dad actually gave me a beer when I was like 10 years old. Just, oh, I think wow. he was drunk. 10 was the age. He was drunk and he was a lazy <laughs> boy and he was like, yeah, drink it. And I was like, cool. <laughs> oh. It was gross. Yeah. My family didn't drink much, and so there wasn't a lot of alcohol in the house. Mm. But it's funny because I remember at some point my dad had beer, and I had learned I was probably like thirteen that beer was uh, good for your hair. Like if you washed your hair, really? I don't know. This is before the internet, and so you just had to learn crap like that, word huh. of mouth. So I'm like, hey, dad, can I borrow one of your beers for the shower? Because I heard that it's good for my hair, and. The sad thing is, I was really gonna use it on my hair. My dad was like, yeah, go ahead, enjoy your shower. And I didn't realize till years later, he was actually letting me, like being a cool dad and letting me have a beer, and instead I was like. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> We're gonna pour a little champagne Ooh, and taste some yeah. cheese. And see if you can smell any fruits in there and just try to describe a fruit if you smell okay. it. Oh, I actually like the way this one smells. It smells a little salty to me. Hmm. Does it smell like anything to you? I don't have like a specific fruit in mind, but I want to say 
berries. Okay. You know what it smells like to me? Like, have you ever grilled fruits? No, I've oh never Oh my God, it's a amazing. It's so good. We've done strawberries, we've done peaches. It kind of has that grilled peach smell. Mm, I could sort of smell the peach now okay. that you said that. So just take a little bit on your tongue and okay. taste it, and then let me know if you taste anything. It definitely has like a cooked flavor to it to me, like cooked. It tastes fruity to me. Apples or something. That's so strange. Well, no, I mean, it, it should be, it is fruit. It's okay. grapes. Well, yeah. So this is like a complex tasting wine. Very like, complex. It smells like RuPaul, tastes like John Hamm. Mmm. Love John Hamm. I would go to that party. <laughs> oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> Do you like it as a non-wine person? Is this something you would drink? Actually, yeah, this is really good to me. It it's suits my palate. Oh, well done. Speaking of that, what the experts on the internet uh -huh. say, one of the things that pairs well with a cuvee is Gouda. So this is just straight Gouda, nothing fancy about okay. it or weird. There are a few spiders on it, so just pick around the spiders. But help yourself, take a bite of your cheese, okay. and then follow it with your cuvee and see what you think. The cheese mm, is nice. Cheese. Mm. <laughs> so good. What makes a pairing good? Well, if you like it better when they're together. Um, so, <laughs> you don't so if you don't like her, you should break up. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. about, oh, oh, food and wine. Okay. Yeah. One thing should elevate the other thing. They I didn't should... feel like a huge contrast, but they definitely like sort of mesh, mesh together. together. It tastes a little salty. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, it's, it's got like a savoriness to it, which I actually like. You know with... what? It does taste a little salty. Yeah. But I like that. I like the part that it tastes. No, but it's not bad, yeah. You know what? That was a win for me. I actually like that. Me too. I want to know what fruit was actually in this. Well, the fruit is just grapes. That's the only so thing in wine. Oh, so there's only grapes, yeah. Else. When I've seen people taste wines, oh, I, I taste a hint of raspberry. Yeah. And I figured, oh, they threw a couple of raspberries <laughs> in the old barrel. And, and that's that sangria. Was... This is actually really interesting. And, and I've never been a huge champagne or sparkling or anything mm -hmm. person. But this is the second one I've had on the show that I'm like, oh, I'm not too shabby. This is nice. Next up, we are going to have the Ghost Pines Chardonnay from Ghost Pines Winery in Sonoma, California. The winery or the company address is mm -hmm. in Sonoma, okay. but they do multi-regional sourcing for their grapes. They've got Napa, Sonoma, Lake County, Joaquin. These grapes are from all over. From the place. all over. So I noticed mm -hmm. the glasses yeah. from the champagne are different from the white wine glasses. Yeah. What is with that? So my champagne glasses aren't even truly what a wine professional would tell you to drink out of. They would say drink it out of a white wine glass. Because remember how we were trying to smell it? Yes. I actually did a test with my friend Silver and Mario. He's a sommelier and she is a wine lover with a great deal of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we did a test because they had champagne flutes, a white wine glass, and coupes, which are the old like kind of 1940s, 50s style. Okay. We poured champagne mm -hmm. into all of them and we smelled them and tasted them and the yeah. whole thing. In the champagne flute, when you smell it, the bubbles get up your nose. So it's like, mm. it's so close to your nose that it's crazy. The white wine glass was perfect. You smelled like 10 times more in the white wine oh, glass. Interesting. And then in the coupe, you smelled nothing because it was all surface area. So the odor uh, was just going just, to the air. Yeah. I have small glasses for white wine, big glasses for red wine. Okay. I have flutes because I have flutes. Yeah, <laughs> why not? And the funny thing is I would probably rather than drink my champagne out of this, I'd mm -hmm. drink it out of a coupe because I look so cool like one of those Mad Men mm, people. Yes. So I'm, I dig it. we did start to talk about the beginnings of your wine drinking, which was around 10 or so. Yes. I'm assuming you didn't really kick into drinking at 10. No, What not age at all. were you when you like really started drinking? I would say when I got to college, okay. I started trying, you know, different beers, different whiskeys, tequila, sort of expanding my And what's palate. your, what's your main alcohol that you like? My main thing is, is whiskey or tequila. And did you get to that in college? Was that like since back then or did you grow no, into that? No, I didn't. In college, it was just like, what can I get <laughs> to get super fucked up? It wasn't until actually after college where I actually would go out to dinner and I'd be like, okay, I'll try some whiskey. And they'd be like, what whiskey? And I'd be like, <gasps> and I, you know, I actually had a little more money than I had in college. So I was like, well, maybe I'll try something so, that you recommend. You okay. Know? So you weren't buying it based on price. You're buying it based on a recommendation. Yes. You said you were more of a red wine guy as yes. wine goes. I always was more of a red wine person as well. And Chardonnay in particular, I was mm. never really a no. fan of. Every once in a while, somebody's like, no, but you got to try this one. And then you try it and you go, oh. That's not bad. Yeah. Sometimes I'm starting to think it's the state of mind that you're in when you're trying the wine, which is why I think this is kind of nice. Because if you came over here on your own, you and Danny would be drinking whiskey and I'd be drinking red wine. I think a lot of life is the state of mind you're in. Oh my God, that's personally. beautiful. Well, there you go. There's a little nugget Andrew for you. Andrew Scully, a little nugget. A little nugget.
I'm definitely a budget wine drinker where mm -hmm. it's like I had to shop on the bottom shelf of the grocery store. So I'm like, well, I don't really like Chardonnays. Or maybe I just don't like $4 Chardonnays. Maybe that's the yeah. thing. But yeah, and this is my old trusty wine key that is broken, but I love it so much that I will use it until it will not let me use it most Keep her going. anymore. Yeah. Although I could just buy another one. You but that's could. $8 that I could have that Amazon this doesn't need. This is sentimental, need. you know? This is... Did you get anything really cool when you were bartending? I worked at a Casamigos event, and I got actually some like cool shakers. Oh, and nice. I might have got an opener. No, I didn't get an opener. Why would I get an opener? It's tequila. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. I've been noticing that you pour your guest far less than you pour yourself. Would you like to? I would like to just know? say that in the classic Irish tradition, we always switch glasses. So realistically, you're right. right okay. You're Irish yep. too. So slancha. Slancha. <laughs> So this is our Chardonnay. So let's give it a little smell. Well, actually, this one you can swirl. So this is one of the things they do to open up the aromas. It's got a grapey smell. <laughs> I don't know. I'm terrible at this part. Hmm. It smells like... I want to say it smells dry. Is that even a real thing? You know what it kind of smells like to me? Pool rafts. Like in the swimming pool. Like the floaties. Interesting. Hold on. <laughs> I know. After a while, you got to like... Right? You got to just breathe regular air. I'm going to say oaky because I, it's, I okay. smell wood or something. And people are always talking about oak in Chardonnay, so mm -hmm. maybe that's what that smell is. I was going to say, as compared to the champagne mm -hmm. we just tried, it's not that salty smell, yeah. I don't it's think, more, at least. It's more like plasticine <laughs> to me. Like a plastic buttery? piece of wood. I would say buttery. That's a good word for Chardonnay. I hear that all the time. All right, I'm hmm. going to give mine a little okay. taste. I will too. It's very smooth. It's very like. It is very smooth. You know how like sometimes white. Oh, uh, butter on the back end. Did you that. taste that? I taste that too. Oh, yeah. that was cool. Totally. It was like a delayed yes. reaction. Nailed it. Hell yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Hmm. I've never had that happen with a wine before. Interesting. This is a buttery Chardonnay. It really is. And yeah. I never knew what that meant until right now. Until right now. Golly. Okay, I'm going to do another one. I would say this one's a little on the savory side too. And then. I would agree. Butter on the back end. Yeah, it's pretty good. What they say this one will pair with is buttered popcorn. Mm. So that's what we got here. So we got some extra And I'm butter. curious, since it's got the buttery flavor in it, did you get any butter on your popcorn? Yeah, that's buttery. Okay. Mm. Mine was that's a... Good. Mm. I'm going to a second piece because mm. I got just kind of a plain piece. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah. That's like just an easy drinker. You know mm. what, though, I wish? I wish it was like ice cold. And it's a little warm in here today. You know, like Halloween is in California. <laughs> it's still nice though. Yeah, that's mm. not bad. Are you having any of your acid reflux? You know what? Not right not now. Yeah. I just got like a nice salty buttery piece and that was fantastic with this. Mm. Huh. I All like right. it a lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I don't normally like white wines, but yeah. this is nice. Yeah. And I like that you can have popcorn with white wine. Mm -hmm. Classy and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not too uptight. Look, look what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm fun. You're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, moving on to the next one. Cool. Cool. Next up is the Velvet Devil Merlot by Charles Smith Winery from Columbia Valley, Washington. Mm. And I like the idea of wines from Washington, I think just because I like the Pacific Northwest. Okay. When I was up there for the film festival, I definitely had mm -hmm. like a local Oregon wine. I wish I could remember, but... Somebody won Best Actress in that festival. Oh, wait. I think I know. It? I think I know. Oh, her name's like right on the tip right? of my tongue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Who was it? It was me. It was you. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a fun That's thing. That's pretty awesome. That was pretty yeah. awesome. And so with that, I definitely celebrated with some local wines. And I do like to do that whenever I'm in an area. Try the local beers, try the local wines. If you've got a spirit that's that's the big thing, if it's, you know, Kentucky bourbon, okay, let's try it. Let's do it, yeah. Let's Why do it. Let's that makes take this show on the yeah. road, man. <laughs> Charles Smith, he does the same thing that the other two wines do where it's multi-sources. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Land is one thing, but if you can get mm -hmm. the grapes from other places and just make and the wine. Grapes. Yeah, yeah. Then why not? and that's what they do. And he has a lot of cool bottles with cool labels and cool let's see, titles. Let's see the logo. Yeah, it's a pretty cool one. The Still Velvet my favorite Devil. is the first one, but I do, yeah, this is cool. This, this is cool. cool. My problem is sometimes I get sucked in by a cute label. Totally. And I'm like, I love the name. And that's why we got all the wines today is because they were like Halloween specific. So you I was know, a little one nervous. One specific wine that has done that to me, Pinot Evil. Oh my gosh. The whole see no evil, speak no evil. Pinot Evil. Yeah, and it's little monkeys on there too. And oh. I'm just like, you son of a bitch. Did you get it? You got it. it. Yep, yep. And how yeah. was it though? 
I enjoyed it, actually. Okay, see, that's good, though, because yeah. I've definitely tried one that will remain nameless. Clever name sucked me in because I was like, I love the name. It was not good. God but, bless those marketing but, people. So, yeah, and I do. I love marketing. I'm a visual artist, mm -hmm. so I think I get pulled in a little bit. I'm a writer, so also yep. the clever turn of a phrase. Mm -hmm. Pino mm -hmm. evil. So Velvet Devil, cute label, obviously Halloween inspired for me. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give this one a whirl. And the other beauty part, twist off cap. I love it. Boom. I love the twist off. I do love a twist off. This is so easy. All right. But there is something about uncorking. It's very them. romantic, yeah, the uncorking. It is. It is. All right, grab yourself a glass. Ooh -wee. We're going to do the swirl and the sniff. Okay. This is the bigger red wine glass. Oh, my question is when you swirl mm -hmm. and it drips down, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Okay, so back when I was first learning about wine, they would call that the legs. The legs. And what they would say is if it's evenly spaced, it's a balanced wine. And these are evenly spaced. Okay. And they're fairly thin. Now, the thickness or thinness, the viscosity, has to do with the alcohol content. So okay. this looks like it's not a... I think the thicker it is, the higher the alcohol content. I feel like that makes sense, though, because alcohol itself is thick. So thicker than water, at least, right? There you go. Now, I'm going to smell it. And red wine, for me, I don't smell fruits ever. I smell weird stuff. So okay. I'm going to let you speak first and tell me. Okay. And like, sometimes you look at the color, and it's pretty, but I don't know what the color is supposed to tell color. you. I'm going to smell it. What do I smell? <laughs> it smells oaky to me. Okay. Um, I never <laughs> smell. Awful. I never Hold smell <clears throat> anything that's supposed to be eaten. It smells a little bit like shoe leather that you sweat in a little bit. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. But I, but I think it's probably going to be good too. Like that's the things I smell. Sweat for sure. There's like sweat <laughs> and leather. Perfect. Now right. I definitely want to take a. Sip. And I don't think if I could get a third. Hang on. Maybe spices. See if we can smell some spices. Mm, true. I'm just going to go straight black pepper. That's what I was thinking, but yeah. then I was thinking. Ugh. Am I just saying this because I need a she spice? said it's going to be like a spice oh, yeah. thing, you know? But it's not one of those spices like cinnamon or cloves. No, it's it's not definitely like, a sweet like spice. just a Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. All right. Me too. It's really good. The just, balance of it feels very like it's very okay. balanced. It's a very balanced wine. It's like yeah. the legs told us. Yeah. Maybe legs oh. do mean something. Legs don't lie. Mm. Mine are a little on the thick side right now and they're not lying about that this well it's very mellow and it, you know what it doesn't Super do Super mellow. it doesn't yeah. do anything to your tongue where like there's no after there's no. no like it's almost refreshing in a way as weird as that is to say about no but isn't wine, that great though yeah no yeah it's nice is there maybe a toffee scent to it oh i can smell that maybe yeah 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 good call maybe yeah well done your smeller's working good my old honker's okay. working real nice so what they said it would pair with one of the things that the Charles Smith website said, okay. bacon anything. Yes. But it also said it would go well with chocolate. So we're going to follow this up with a sweet, but we're going to start with the bacon. So go ahead and yes. grab yourself a slice. Now, do you like your bacon crispy or chewy? I prefer it chewy, mm. but this is crispy and it's really good. Okay. Because I, I didn't ask you before no, I prepared no. it this because great, I'm actually. a crispy girl. I want mm. it to be like a potato chip with meat in it. My mom's a crispy girl. Mm -hmm. Loves her bacon extra crispy, but this is really good. I feel like this is not too crispy. Like, it's no. not burnt. Mm -mm. This is just right. I'm going to follow it up now. Okay. I will finish this, but I want to get to the wine. Bacon. Ooh, the wine got fruitier. Really? Interesting. I mean, that makes sense because we just added a ton of salt to our mouth. It did get a little fruitier. Like the fruits sure. are just, and, but, oh. they're, but they're cool fruits. It's mild, yeah. yeah. Like maybe a cherry. Cherry, I could, yeah. I could, I could see cherry. Yeah. yeah. Which is so funny that grapes can taste like all these other fruits. I was gonna say. Are other fruits like stepping up fruit, their right. game? Oh yeah, passion fruit. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Yeah, Wait, yeah, yeah. if it tastes like banana. That would be interesting. Basically, if you have <laughs> sugar and like, yeast, you can make alcohol. So you can make alcohol out of bananas, peaches, anything. Just by fermenting them, Just basically, ferment. yeah. Yep, I'm mm. gonna take one more bite, one more sip, and then we're moving on okay. to the chocolate portion of the program. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you make alcohol out of zombie? I think you could probably, uh, no. That was delicious. Mm -hmm. and a Human bit crazy. wine? That's creepy. Wow. We just went there. Human wine. So the next thing it said it was gonna be great with was with chocolate. Okay. So I was very adventurous and I thought, well, I have never made fudge before. I'm going to venture into the world of fudge. And my fudge never sets. These cute this little eyeball-y, yeah. chocolatey thingies mm. are what will hopefully eventually set. But for now, we're just going to 
Spoon the chocolatey eyeball goodness. Spoon in the chocolate. Into our mouth. I'm taking an eyeball oh, right now. Look, yeah. it looks like a fish. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> a little fish spoon. Mmm. That it's would be really, really good, good fudge if it had set. Oh my yeah. God, it's like the best pudding I've ever had. It's so good. The saltiness made it fruitier. What do you mm. think the chocolatiness is gonna do? Cause this is a pretty sweet chocolate. Maybe make it more bitter. Mm hmm Which Maybe. I think I might like. Oh my God, this I is really it delicious. Be fans, right? mm. The next five minutes will be just us <laughs> eating these. <laughs> All right. All right, last I'm little bit. I'm going bite. in, yep. Do we have chocolate on our faces? After chocolate. I still wish I could smell oh, wine man. better. I do like wine when it goes. Way more bitter. And with do the you like it or do you not nice. like that? No, it's nice. Because it contrasts the. Yeah, and see, and I don't like chocolate. sweet and sweet. I loved the bacon because bacon. I like the combo better of the chocolate and the red wine. I do too, yeah. No, I can taste more of the chocolate because after of taking. This. Yeah. It's weird. It and like I goes think, hand in yeah. hand. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of pairing food and mm. wine. And I also feel like, and I've talked about this in other episodes, it's a very American thing to not eat with your alcohol yeah because absolutely. like we were talking about when you were in college and you're like yeah and it's just was like what can i get in me to make uh, yeah. me drunk no part of you was like this would pair nice with a 7-eleven hot dog hell no yeah <laughs> yeah no i mean it probably did several times Maybe. but out of all the wines we had today what was your favorite they all had something nice yeah, about them they did but if i had to pick one mm -hmm. i would go with our first one the or our Champagne, right? Well, the sparkling. The sparkling. The cuvee. Okay. The cuvee. Yes. All right. Well, we'll pour you another glass of that before we send you on your way. I won't hate that. Did you learn anything about wine today, or do you feel like your opinion of wine changed at all today? I did learn some things about learned wine, absolutely. Today. I wasn't aware that they all took grapes from different regions. The ones well, we had not today all of them. did, yeah, yeah. Of course. That was interesting to mm -hmm. me. There's probably more things I've learned. I'm a little buzzed right now. You'll get it when wine. we rewatch. Um, but no, this was this was awesome. So we're at the bitter end. <sighs> you told me that your favorite of the evening was the cuvee. That it was. And now you have a full glass, not just a yes. piddly little sample pour. Shoot, we had a message for the people. Oh we, yeah, we yeah, yeah, do yeah, have yeah. a message. We do have a message for everybody out there. First of all, happy Halloween. Dress up. Show us your costumes. I would love to see it. I love dressing up. Be do you like crazy. Dressing up? Oh, yeah. Are I you do dressing, like dressing up, up this Halloween? I probably will. Any ideas yet? I don't know yet. I don't know. You're like know. a last minute guy. Totally. Every time. Yeah. But you got a lot of wigs for a friend. I do have a lot of wigs. <laughs> it's weird. Go out there, try a lot of wine, give yourself some sample pours. The internet will tell you what pairs with what. You can do it. Have fun. Get crazy. But if you are drinking, call me a cab. Well done, Jim. Thank y'all. Call yourself a cab. You're a cab. Shut your mouth. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab. Have you ever heard of bar mat shots? No. <gasps> yeah. Ooh, I already know what it is, and that's <laughs> gross. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, but I won't tell you guys because it is it's gross. <sighs> it's gross. Should I cut? Yeah, you can cut. We're not doing this on camera. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!